I'm super excited about this. So today we're gonna learn a very interesting and advanced technique to really go ahead and sculpt the skin in Photoshop. We're gonna go ahead and manually paint on the skin, literally paint on the skin, repair and reconstruct it. Now, this is gonna take a lot of time. Yes, it will. This is gonna take a lot of work, a lot of patience. But at the end of the day, the kind of results that you get, the high quality smooth skin, that's totally worth it. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in the mystical world of Photoshop and this photo was submitted by Pasi Yaravenpa. You gotta go ahead and check out his amazing work right in here. He's an awesome portrait photographer. So as we have imported it into Photoshop, it opens up in Camera Raw because this is a raw photo. And this photo was taken in Canon 5DS. So this is a 50 megapixel image. So I've done just minor adjustments, probably increased the contrast just a little bit, highlights decreased it, whites increased it, shadows increased it, and very minimal adjustments. If I just show you, if I just set it to defaults, Camera Raw defaults, see, minimal adjustments. So let's go back. And let's go ahead and open up the image. After doing just minimal adjustments with your photos like contrast and stuff, once you're satisfied, go ahead and open the photo. All right, click on this open image. Just as a side note, you can also do it in Lightroom. So after you've done those minimal adjustments, you can also go ahead, right click, edit in Adobe Photoshop 2018 or whatever version you're using. So here we have our image. So as you can see, if we zoom in, she has a really nice skin to begin with. So the first thing that we need to do is to remove the blemishes before applying any kind of softening, reparation of skin and stuff, frequency separation, always remove blemishes. You don't wanna mess with that when you soften the skin, right? Because that's gonna appear strange. So remove blemishes first, always. How to do that? Very simple, create a new layer. Name this blemishes if you want to for organization purposes. All right. And take the regular healing brush tool, not the spot healing brush tool, regular healing brush tool. If you don't have time in your hand, you can always go ahead and choose the spot healing brush tool. But I prefer the regular healing brush tool because you want to determine which area Photoshop is sampling from, right? So if you want to remove this, take a sample from here by holding the Alt or Option, take a sample and then just paint over this area. And also, pro tip, if you wanna see where the blemishes are, clearly, here's what you can do. You can create an adjustment layer called black and white, click on this one, and take down the reds all the way to minus 200, depending upon the skin tone. You can also go ahead and take down the yellows just a little bit and increase the blues, sometimes it helps. All right, now you can clearly see where those blemishes are. Select the blemishes layer, and then with the regular healing brush tool, make sure not all layers, but current and below is checked because we don't want to sample from the black and whites, right? So make sure current and below is checked and then sample paint, sample paint, right? You can see exactly where the blemishes are much more clearly. Just like this, very easy. Now this is going to take some time. Right? You can also do it through spot healing brush tool, but then again, if you are taking the time to sculpt the skin, you might as well take a little more time and just remove the blemishes, right? So it's very simple to do, but it's time consuming. For some of us, it might be fun. I mean, it's fun for me to do this, okay? I don't know about you, man, but I kind of like doing this. But I'm gonna spare you the time, I've already done it, so I'm gonna open that image where I've already done it. And after you have done removing the blemishes, do not forget to delete the black and white adjustment layer. So here we have removed all of the blemishes that we could see. So let me show you the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. And if you have a look, let us just go ahead and delete this black and white adjustment layer. We don't need it anymore. Blemishes are on its own layer, the removed blemishes. So have a look. So these replaced areas are on its own layer, not the blemishes, but the replaced areas. Now, if you are not satisfied with any of the removals or replacements, you can always go ahead and erase that. And that's the advantage of having this in another layer. But here's the catch. After this is finalized, you have to create a merged layer, right? So make sure you have removed all of the blemishes, make sure everything is all clear and all good. And only after that, go ahead proceed. So let us go ahead and turn on the background layer and create a merged layer. A merged layer of everything that you see on the canvas right now or a merged layer with the blemishes removed. All right. So to do that, press Ctrl 
Alt, Shift and E. If you're using a Mac, that would be Command, Option, Shift and E. Okay, now it's time for us to apply the concepts of frequency separation and this is going to get exciting. Now, what is frequency separation? Well, as simple as it gets, frequency separation is separating the high frequencies from the low frequencies. In the high frequencies, we have the skin texture. In the low frequencies, we have the skin color and the skin tone. Why to separate it? Good question because we want to work on them separately. You see, when we are working on the color and the tone of the skin, we don't want to affect the skin texture. We want it to be intact because otherwise it will be just like the beauty mode in your phones. Everything will be waxed out. You don't want that to happen. You want to soften the skin at the same time. You want to retain the skin texture. On the other hand, if you want to remove something like wrinkles or stuff and you don't want to affect the skin color, you can do that as well by just working on the high frequencies. Okay, makes sense. All right, let's jump straight in. So this layer will just have the color and the copy of it will just have the texture. So make two copies of it, Control or Command J and name this one color and name this one texture. And by the way, if you really want to know what is frequency separation, the science behind it, what is frequency and stuff, you got to go ahead and check out this video right here. In this video, we really go in depth into what is frequency separation. All right. Now, what do you have to do? Turn off this texture layer and come back to color layer. Go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. Now let's zoom in quite a bit. You could have created smart objects, but that kind of makes things a little slower. So I'm resenting from that. All right, so decrease the radius all the way to 0 0.1. Now let's take a sample from this area. Just click on this area and have a look. We see the big preview of the skin texture. Just go ahead and increase it to the point where the skin textures go away, right? Just at the point where the skin texture go away, stop, okay? It's still there, it's still there, it's still there, it's still there. Now it's going away, now it's going away. Now let's sample other areas. It's still there in this area. So we'll go for something like nine ish. Let's stay at nine. Hit OK once you're satisfied. This contains the color, right? And this contains the whole image. This doesn't contain the texture. So if we subtract the color from the original image, what will we be left with? The texture, right? So select the texture layer, go to image and then apply image. Now we want to subtract what? the color layer, right? So let's go ahead and select the color layer and channel RGB is fine. And then blending mode, very easy. Subtract, right? Very obvious. And make sure the values of scale and offset are 2 and 128. Again, why these values 2 and 128? We have to make sense of it, right? So go ahead and check out this video if you really want to know why we use values of 2 and 128. Once that is done, hit OK. Change the blend mode of the texture layer from normal to linear light. Okay. Now make a group of both of these. So if we just go ahead and press and hold control or command, select the other one and then press control or command G, this creates a group of this. If I turn off the group, the image is the same. If I turn on the group, the image is the same, which means that have a look, these both images are different. This is different. This is different, which means that they both combine together to give you the original image. So we have successfully separated the texture and the color. Now here comes the most fun part of the tutorial. We're going to go ahead and create a brand new skin for her. This is the essence of this technique. Make sense? No, let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, let's go ahead and create a new layer. And this is just for demonstration purposes. Let's create a new layer. What we're going to do, we're going to take the brush and we're going to sample from the skin and we're going to create a brand new skin, just like painting. It's just like painting, right? So, something like this. This is very heavy handed. I'm going to increase the flow and opacity to 100 and something like this. Really creating the skin all over again like that. Just just like sculptors. OK. Creating the skin again. Considering in all the lights and shades and all that stuff, you're going to create the skin like that. This is too heavy handed, but we're going to go very soft on this one. Just like this. So you get the idea. What are we going to do here? Right? So carve out a nice skin for her. That's the whole motive of this technique. Have a look at this. This is of course very too much, but 
you'll get an idea what we are actually doing. Keep all the ups and downs in mind. Now, have a look. We don't want this right there. We don't want this wrinkle or these dark circle over there, whatever you call it. I don't know what to call it, but we don't want it right there. So we're going to remove it. So how to remove it? Don't consider it. You don't take a sample from here and create this. No, take a sample from here. We want this to be bright. So paint this with bright and consider in all the skin, all the dimensions of skin. So this is the cheekbones and just constructing the skin from the scratch. And this is what we're going to do. And this is just demo, right? This is not the actual process. This is just to make you understand what are we going to do. So that way we're going to create the face like that. You get the idea, right? Now have a look at what are we doing, but we're going to apply it more smoothly and more subtly. So where are we going to apply this? Well, very good question. We're going to create a layer between the color and the texture so that we still have the skin texture while we soften the skin and sculpt the skin really. So let's go ahead and start our process. So what are we going to do? Take the brush. Okay. And make sure the flow is very low, somewhere around two or three, whatever you're comfortable with, but make sure it's under 10. I personally suggest it to be under five. So I keep it somewhere around two or one sometimes. So let's select two and let's zoom in quite a bit and reconstruct the nose. So here's what we do. Take the brush, take a sample from here and ask yourself this question. Now, this is very important. Listen to it carefully. Whenever you paint, ask yourself this. What do I want that area to be colored in? How do I want that area to look like? Okay, so here's a pro tip. Whenever we are doing this, turn off the texture layer. It's much easier to work it that way. Okay, it's, it's distracting. Textures are sometimes distracting. Once you're done, you can always go ahead and turn on the texture layer and you can turn it on and off time to time. All right, so here's what we do. Take a sample, okay, and then what do you want this area to be painted like? So zoom out, always zoom out when you're doing this. This is not a thing where you're zoomed in. This is not blemish removal. You have to be zoomed out because if you're zoomed in, if you're doing something, you later realize when you zoom out that it looks horrible. So make sure you are zoomed out a bit and then doing this. All right. Take a sample from here. What do I want this area to be painted like straight? Just like that. This area. Just like this. And once you're sampling, make sure you are sampling enough pixels. So let's go ahead and select the eyedropper tool and make sure it's something like 11 by 11, 5 by 5, or even 31 by 31 average. Now, what do I mean by that? When you have point sample selected, okay, when you have point sample selected, it samples from one pixel, one point. We don't want that to happen. We want to take average of a collection of points. So that's why we choose something like five by five or 11 by 11. And anyway, do not forget this image is blurred to nine pixels, right? So anything below nine pixels, five by five, three by three won't make much of a sense. So you can go ahead and choose 11 by 11 or 31. Again, remember this is a 50 megapixel image. If you're editing a 24 megapixel image, it might be lower for you. Depends upon the size of the skin on the canvas. All right. So let's go for 11 by 11. That's fine. Also make sure you do not select anything like 101 by 101 because that's going to take an average, a lot of pixels. So you don't want that to happen. So 11 by 11 is fine. Let's come back to the brush and we talked about it a lot. <laughs> All right. So let's select the sample. All right, let's construct it that way. Now, what do we want this area to be colored like this sample? And here's a pro tip. Take a lot of samples. Okay. Take a lot of samples. Make sure we create a straight nose like that. And this is going to take some time. This is going to take a hell lot of time and patience and practice, but it's worth it. Okay. It's worth it. Totally worth it. Let's look at the before and after. We did just one stroke. Let me show you the before and after. So here's the before. Look at the nose. Here's the after. Just one stroke. Look at how straight and refined the nose is. Now we can name it nose. I've not done it completely, but you can go ahead and name it nose. And you can also go ahead and create a lot of layers in between them, not necessarily just one layer. And then you can decrease the opacity if you don't like it so much. So probably for this one, will go with somewhere around 62 ish, 60, 65 ish. That's fine. Now that looks good before 
after. Look at that area. Now this is gonna take quite a while, but this is totally worth it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna make the video a little faster so that you can witness the whole process. So there we go, enjoy. So here we are, our image is done. Just have a look at the skin. So if we just zoom in, have a look at the beautiful skin that we have right now. Let's zoom out just a little bit and let me show you the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. Isn't that a classic difference? Now, let me show you what we did. First, we did the nose as I showed you before, and then we decrease the opacity because that was necessary. Always make sure that you don't forget to play with the opacity. If 100% opacity looks good to you, please go for it. But if that doesn't, make sure to reduce it. Okay, now, after you have done all of that, you can also go ahead and select the group and decrease the overall opacity if you want to, but I like it at 100. Now, after the nose, I did the left face, left cheek, that area. And if you want, you can also go ahead and decrease the opacity, but I like it 100. Again, it's a personal preference. If you want that perfect skin, you can choose 100. If you want it to be a little more natural, you can decrease the opacity. But I like my opacity to be at 100. Don't judge me. All right. So after we have done this beautiful skin, we can complement it by dodging and burning. Now, what is dodging and burning? Just a quick little recap. We have talked about this before. Dodging and burning is brightening and darkening particular areas of the image to add dimension to it. Right? That's all there is. Dodging is brightening and burning is darkening. So whatever is facing the light, whatever is protruding in the direction of light, make it brighter. Whatever is facing away from the direction of light, make it darker. Whatever you want to bring forward, make it brighter. Whatever you want to take it backwards, make it darker. All right. In this image, I don't think we need to dodge because some areas are really, really bright. They look good. We can also just go ahead and burn it. You see, dodging and burning doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do both dodging and burning. You can do just one, right? So let's go ahead and create a curves adjustment layer and take it down. Now there are tons of ways to dodge and burn. This is just one of them, all right? So take it down just like this. Select the mask, make sure it's selected and then press Control or Command I. Then simply take the brush, decrease the flow to somewhere around 1% or something like that, maybe 5%, whatever your choice is. I just press the backward slash key by accident. Press that again. All right, 
Take the brush, make sure the foreground color is white and simply paint on the areas which are facing away from the light. So, or the areas where you want to create a dimension kind of stuff. So cheekbones, if you want to bring it forward, you can just paint dark in there like that. I know that was too much, but you can always play with the opacity and you get the idea what we are doing here. So let's have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. Of course, decrease the opacity here. Also what you can do, let me give you one more tip. Okay, I'm going to show you the final result, but let me give you one more tip. After you have just painted this area, to make sure that you have not painted on the bright areas, just double click on the right hand side of the layer. Don't decrease the opacity now. Just double click there and this will open up the Lens Styles dialog box. All you have to do, take the slider of underlying layer from right to left and this will be opposite if you are dodging. Right now we are burning, right? Like that. This will delete the bright areas of the underlying layer from the current layer. Make sense? Right? So in the underlying layer, these are the bright areas, right? So it will delete these bright areas of the underlying layer from the current layer, which is the curves adjustment layer. Okay. So there you go. Now this is very harsh. So you can always go ahead, hold the alter option, click on this slider and just separate them like that. Now that looks like something hit. Okay. And then you can go ahead and decrease the opacity like that. Okay. Have a look at the before and after before flat after it adds some dimension. You can also do it on the other side. Of course, if we zoom in, it looks strange. So we'll decrease the opacity even more. Just something like 24 or probably 28 ish. That's fine. So there we go. That's also what you can do. Similarly, you can go ahead and dodge other areas, but there's a caveat. The caveat is this. You might have to create multiple curves adjustment layers if you want to use blend if. Because we have used blend if in this one, have a look, we have removed the bright areas. So you really cannot go ahead and burn it because this area is already bright. For this area, you might have to create another curves adjustment layer. So keep that in mind. So just like this, let me just show you. Let me just show you. Take the brush and if you try to go ahead and darken it, it just won't darken. Why? Because we have applied that blend if over there. Right. So you might have to create another curves adjustment layer. Click on this adjustment layer icon, choose curves, take it down and you know the whole routine, right? So you can do that as well. And if you're not using blend if in the layer styles dialog box, you can go ahead and do it in the same curves adjustment layer, just one. All right. And after you're done with dodging and burning, you can always go ahead and retouch the eyes and have a complete playlist just on retouching eyes. You can check it out right there. Now you can also top it off by using liquify. So what you can do, create a merged layer after you have done all of that create a merged layer by holding control alt shift e i'm going to show it very quickly and then convert this into a smart object this is very essential now it is suggested and even i personally recommend it that you apply liquify in the beginning just after you import your image into photoshop but there are certain disadvantages to it for example if you want to change the shape just a little bit then if you change the liquify at the bottom layer, you might have to reposition the blemishes, skin softening, everything might be in a mess. You might have to create a merge layer again at the top and do it. It's kind of, it's got to be messy. So here's what I suggest. You can also do this. There are advantages and disadvantages to this as well. So I'm just going to show you another technique. So after you create a merge layer, then you go to filter, convert for smart filters, convert this to a smart object, then hit OK. And after you do that, after you convert that into a smart object, then apply liquify, you go to filter and then liquify. Now here's an advantage to this. Let me show you how to work the liquify and then let me show you the advantages. All right, let's zoom in quite a bit. And suppose you want to correct the lips, right? Select the forward warp tool, the shortcut to which is W and make the brush as big as the thing that you want to affect. Okay. So in this case, this lips, so this is as big. So brush size just like this and nudge it slowly. Decrease the pressure just a little bit and nudge it very slowly. Don't do it quickly. Very slowly nudge it. Decrease the size. Okay. All right. That looks good. All right. 
Now have a look here, it's a little asymmetrical. Very tiny adjustments, no huge adjustments over there. That's good. This will go a little bit inside. Okay, if you wanna make it smooth, you can do that as well. Make the brush as big as that, and then make it straight. That's okay, this side. Look at this bump, we need to take care of this. Bring it out a little bit. Okay, that looks good. And you get the idea. Now, after you've done all of that, zoom out and have a look at it, whether that looks natural or not. Then zoom in and click on this very nice button, magical button called reconstruct. Click on that. And as you decrease the amount, have a look, it returns to its original state. If you think you have done so much, you have done too much, you can keep it in the middle. But I think for me, 100 is fine. Hit OK. And hit OK if you're satisfied. Now this, this is what? This is a smart object. You can always go ahead and double click on Liquify and you can change it the way you like. Now what are its advantages? Now one of the biggest advantages of smart objects is that when you apply a filter to it, it's a smart filter. And the advantage of smart filters is that smart filters can be copied. Yes, they can be copied. So let's zoom in and suppose you want to make a change. For example, you want to take it a little inside like that and hit OK. OK, that's fine. Now, if you want to make a change in the face, in the skin or something, if you want to take it back, probably remove this dodging and burning or stuff like that, take it off, remove it. You can always create a new merge layer, okay? Create a new merge layer in case you want to change something down here and you've created a merge layer. Here's the advantage of this. Create a new merge layer, okay? Control, Alt, Shift and E, Command, Option, Shift and E. Convert this into a smart object, okay? And then copy the smart filters to this one. Hold the Alter option, click and drag and paste. Now the smart filters will be copied to the new merge layer in case you want to change something in the bottom. So Liquify is adjustable now. Have a look. The same effect has been applied to this one as this one. Look, I just click, look, the same effect. Now you can go ahead and delete it. Delete the previous one. And just we just have the new one and that is done. Now I actually went ahead and retouched the eyes, did dodging and burning a little properly. And this is what I got. So this is the before and this is the after. Just have a look at the beautiful skin that you can get using this. So that's how to not only get a really good smooth skin, but also sculpt out the face the way we desire. Just a quick little recap. First of all, remove the blemishes. Create a new layer with the healing brush tool or the spot healing brush tool, whichever is your favorite, remove the blemishes. And remember the tip to see the blemishes, create a black and white adjustment layer, take down the reds, you really will be able to see the blemishes. Then delete the black and white adjustment layer after you remove the blemishes and create two copies, two merged layers, one for the color, one for the texture. Apply frequency separation, separate both of them using frequency separation. And between the color and the texture layer, you can create new layers and paint in the skin. The whole objective of this, let me make it simple for you. The whole objective of this, if I just turn off the texture uh, like that, is to make the skin just like a doll. Just like one of those standing outside those clothes stores, right? Just like those dolls, all right? Now, once you do that and turn on the texture, you get the texture back. If you want extra texture, you can make a copy of this, Control or Command J, and then it's too much, then you can hide that behind a mask. Hold the Alter option, click on the mask button, take the brush with flow somewhere around 20-ish, and you can paint back in some texture right in there if you want some extra texture like that, if you're into that. Some people do it, and you can do that as well, just like this. Isn't that wonderful? So that's all there is. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if this helped you, make sure to share this video, and don't forget to subscribe, and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss a thing. I will see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.